I remember he wrote out, what do you, th what do you boys think of this shit? Uh -huh. And uh, I'll never forget that. That really hit me. It was a very, it was a very beautifully produced a booklet, quite big, with color, uh -huh. and uh, it had a glamour about it that even at that young age I appreciated. Wow. That may be among the first. And then, of course, the Queen Mary came along a year later, and everybody talked about the Queen Mary. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was the, uh, the Liberté, former German ship that the French had taken over. And I did a crossing in 19, early 1950s. We were way at the stern, which vibrated quite a lot. Oh. So there were a few negatives. <laughs> I still enjoyed it. They were more honestly mechanical. They, not to say they didn't have some streamlining, but all the parts, you knew what they were about. Later ships tend to do, uh, uh, blank that out, sort of smooth everything over. Mm -hmm. And they don't have the uh, sort of honesty that mm -hmm. the earlier ships had. And I like all the machinery, I like to see it. I could usually find, even in the uh, slickest modern ship, some interesting details like mm -hmm. davits for, uh, for the boats. Mm -hmm. uh, any kind of detail like that's interesting. Well, well I thought as a child I wanted to be an architect hard shapes, uh, geometric forms. It all, it all fits together with the, uh, the ships. Well, that, that's where the cubism comes in because I got very fascinated in cubism when I was in art school. And uh, uh, architecture is cubism mm -hmm. uh, on a large scale. What happens gradually, I think, I would, I would see things I liked and I would maybe imitate them, but gradually I would concentrate on the parts of the things I liked and drop away the parts that didn't interest me. Uh -huh. And by doing that over and over again, I'd pick out bits and pieces of work that I liked and I would incorporate them into my work.